What's going on, doll fans? It is your boy Dylan, and I got some updates for you on some things going on with the NFL and the status and this, that, and the other. Uh, and so, actually, this first thing that we are going to uh, discuss here is something that we have talked about in the past. And uh, so, this is coming from ESPN sources NFL camps likely to have fewer players. So, we did uh, talk about this, uh, I think, I believe, one time in the past. Uh, about how they were potentially going to cut roster sizes and the reports uh, even said when I saw them before that you know they're doing it or they would do it potentially in an effort to um, you know recoup some of the financial losses that they would sustain because of you know having no fans or less fans etc etc so but of course it's always you know all about their money you know blah 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 and but the players are going to get fucked right so they've already they've canceled the supplemental draft so you know a few extra guys aren't going to be able to get in now they're going to have smaller camp sizes which i mean look you know to be fair on the one hand is smart because then i suppose it's less people that could be affected um when there's outbreaks but at the same time if you really gave a shit about the players and the coaching staffs etc cetera, etc cetera, the fans and the health you just wouldn't do it at all um, that's the right answer. This is the half-assed, you know, uh, lip service kind of answer. This is the, you know, superficial, hey, you know, see what we're doing to make you think we're doing the right things, but we're really, you know, being super scummy so that way we can make massive profits. And so look, you know, they're gonna, they're traditionally supposed to have 90 players, right, on these rosters. Well, they're not gonna now, and there's gonna be guys that are gonna be out on the streets, uh, when they shouldn't be and they should you know, they should at least be, you know uh, Training camp, you know Players and able to, to draw a paycheck from these teams in that way uh, But they you know won't be so uh, but let's get into the actual details in an effort to combat the spread of the coronavirus But of course of course they're gonna frame it that way and, and look like I said to be fair uh, yes, but if the the answer if you really gave a shit is to just not do it at all. Don't take the risk with people's lives. But the fact that they are doing it to begin with and then subsequently also putting on in all these half measures that aren't actually going to succeed at doing really much of anything, it just it it adds up to they don't really give a shit. Uh it's all just, you know, like I said, lip service. It's all just you know bullshit. It, it's they're literally lying to our faces and saying, "Hey, we care about this." But, you know, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, I mean, even with the, the Colin Kaepernick stuff, this is a little side note, but, I mean, until he's in the NFL, they can say as much as they want. Like, Roger Goodell was like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm in favor of a team signing him. First of all, why does it take Roger Goodell to fucking sign off on that? He shouldn't have any say to begin with. But even if it does take the fucking okay from the big man up top, well... It doesn't make any kind of fuck of a difference if none of the owners actually fucking sign him because they're all racist pricks. Anyway, let's get into this. So, in an effort to combat the spread of the coronavirus bullshit, NFL teams are likely to bring fewer than the regular 90 players they ordinarily bring to training camp whenever it begins per league sources. I'm sorry, just to stop one more time real quick, think about what that means. So, let's say they cut it down to 75. Okay, but if your measures to prevent outbreaks are not going to be sufficient enough so all you've done then is is cut i mean look it's like i said i think honestly at the end of the day those extra you know um uh 15 players that aren't going to be there for each team might luck out because they might not catch the virus because of that but the downside is is they don't have the paycheck and they're missing out on substantial amounts of money that they would be getting otherwise but you know I mean, so instead of infecting 90 people, you infect 75. You're still going to allow the outbreaks to happen. You're just going to say, you know, on the surface, oh, we're doing this to, to minimize the amount, but we still acknowledge that there's going to be outbreaks and cases and whatever. And we don't really care if people die. We're just going to make it seem like we're doing stuff, even though we're really not. One source said he believed it's likely that teams will go to camp with 80-man rosters. 
Okay, and another source said it, that it uh, said it's definitely not 90. A third league source said he has heard lots of discussion about 75 players potentially instead of 90, especially with the reduction in preseason games and teams not needing as many players for camp as normal. I mean, it's just all a bundle of fucking bullshit excuses to really mean, hey man, we just need to make sure that we protect our profits as much as possible. So... You know, instead of canceling the season and not exposing players, coaches, etc. at all, we're going to just cut camps back a little bit and, and cancel out a couple preseasons. But we're still going to have them there and give the, you know, opportunity for exposure. Uh, it'll just be a little bit less people and a little less games. And, you know, instead of the first eight rows of seats being there, we're going to put advertising so we can make money back for what we would lose for those eight rows of seats. Uh, but then we're still going to fill the rest of the seats. I mean, again, no team to this point has sold less than 50% capacity. And that's only one team, the Packers. And that's only one team. The rest are selling uh, upwards of max capacity. Most of them are. So it's just, it's absurd. Uh, there are also increasing questions from league sources about whether camp can start on time with the number of coronavirus cases around the country spiking. The NFL also is considering expanding its practice squads to 16 to 20 players in the event of a coronavirus outbreak. So, I mean, at, at the end of the day, though, in other words, so, but I mean, like, it just, I don't know. It's, it's all, so you're going to lessen the, uh, you know cut the amount of people that you can bring to camp but then you're going to expand the practice squads so throughout the season you can expose more people because literally the reason for that and, and as they said in the event of a coronavirus outbreak so what they're saying is is we want to cut guys from uh the rosters overall for training camp so we have to pay less guys but then at, during the season to ensure that we can keep the uh, season rolling, even if guys do get the coronavirus and have to be, you know, quarantined or God forbid somebody dies, we want to make sure that we have bodies to rotate in because the amount of money that we would make throughout the season from advertising, ticket sales, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera, people watching um, is going to dwarf the amount that we'll have to pay those extra few bodies uh, at the end of the day and we're already making sure that we get waivers you know the players are gonna have to sign waivers we already talked about that uh, they're gonna have fans they're gonna have everybody in their mother's brother sister aunt, uncle sign waivers so they if they get sick and die or have massive medical bills they can't help be held responsible but god damn it man you know I mean it's just it's absolutely and I don't understand how anybody can look at this and be like yeah they're the NFL and these owners, they're right on, man. They just really care about the fans and, you know, the players. And it's, it's, it's total bullshit. Anyway, but the league and NFLPA are trying to figure out the right number of players each team can bring to camp. And that appears to be between 75 and 80. I don't understand, though, how they feel like that's going to like prevent outbreaks though that's the thing it's not it's not going to prevent it you're just going to have a few less people that can potentially get it um and then it's i mean it's none of it makes any fucking sense one plan being further discussed is splitting the roster into two groups and having each practice at a different time no matter how many players are allowed to report to camp i mean <clears throat> I guess it's still not going to fucking prevent outbreaks from happening. In fact, it probably increases the likelihood that everybody would get it because then you'd have staggered groups of people who aren't even getting tested, but maybe once every three days and, you know, one group could bring it in and then infect the next group before you even know the first group had it. And so, okay, whatever. I mean, none of this makes any fucking sense whatsoever. Again, questions persist regarding protocols and they are not going away anytime soon. In an abnormal year, the league is deciding on which abnormal measures it needs to deploy to combat a pandemic. Uh, let's see. How about just cancel the fucking season? Look, man, the NBA, I know this is a little bit different, but uh, it's super related because the top infectious disease expert in the country said that the, that the NFL, if they were going to be able to pull it off, would have to create a bubble like MLS and the NBA have. I just talked to you guys in an earlier video, one of my last couple videos about how the MLS, Major League Soccer, the coronavirus has gotten into their bubble. The NBA is now talking about creating a second bubble because their first one got infiltrated 
whatever by the coronavirus and they are exponentially seeing their cases increase. I, I mean, what does it take for people to fucking get it? I mean, I know there's a lot of dumbass people. There are a lot of people that just believe the propaganda that they fucking read. And then there's a lot of people out there also that are just inundated with it and don't have the real information and you know all they have is the lies so i mean there's a range obviously there's a spectrum of you know circumstance and so on and so forth that lead people to believe this ridiculous bullshit but it is at the end of the day just ridiculous bullshit so like anyway whatever uh there is a little bit more though that i want to add and because then it just makes it even fucking worse right so because this this particular thing that I'm about to get to you right now is just an absolute no fucking win uh, whatsoever. It's absolutely insane what they are thinking about doing. So let's get into it. The NFL player or excuse me, NFL players could be fined for breaking coronavirus related protocols, sources say. So before I get into this and the details, I mean, think about that. So they're mandating right that like let's say they wear masks and so on and so forth but even in the their protocols they say except for like sports uh related blah 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 right activities so they could take it off i mean there's all kinds of times that you could say are sports related to get a drink of fucking water from the water fountain to take a shower you're probably not going to wear your mask in the shower i would think right so like i mean there's all these times but then all of a sudden you could get guys being, you know, fined for things that they thought would be fine and, you know, arguably could be under the so-called protocols. I mean, it's just a whole fucking mess, but let's start getting into this a little bit. But then on, on top of that, though, then it's just yet another way in which they will dox money from the players because where do those fines go, right? It's the NFL fining the players. So it's just yet another way that they have found to be able to recoup their losses that they will experience, but and and at the expense of the players, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I mean, they literally can't be getting. I mean, you would think that there is a bottom to how disgusting this barrel is, but there isn't. I mean, literally, if there are outbreaks and people start dying as a result of them, you know, having games and stuff, and they literally just will not shut down. I mean, that's as despicable as you can get. We're not there yet, but they are full steam ahead in that direction. So we will have to see how it plays out. But let's get to these details. And uh, if the NFL is able to conduct a 2020 season, players will participate under a number of coronavirus related restrictions on the field and off. I'm sorry. Let's pause for one more second. So let's also note real quick, as I mentioned before, they'll have to sign waivers and stuff. So there could be all kinds of stuff in that waiver that they don't read themselves. Maybe their agents will, and maybe they'll talk to them about it, but that doesn't mean that they'll hear it or they'll remember it or any of that stuff. And so they could, anyway, it's just, it's a fucking disgrace. It's disgusting. It's a mess. Anyway, that could mean playing in specifically designed face masks and potentially fines for off-field activities that lead to the spread of the virus. I mean, they just shouldn't know because, and, and, and again, it's then shifting the, the, the responsibility on them and on the players, as opposed to the NFL and the owners where it should be. They shouldn't be having the season to begin with. The National Football League Players Association conducted a two-hour conference call Thursday with team player reps and NFLPA medical do uh, director Tom Mayer, and the call centered on the protocols the league and the union have been discussing to allow players to participate in training camp and the regular season amid the coronavirus pandemic. Players were told that the chances of conducting a season around the virus will depend on the success of their testing and con on, uh, contact tracing program and were given details about uh, what they could expect and what would be expected of them. Let's note that both of those programs overall in the country, especially in places like uh, Florida and Texas, where, you know, several of the NFL's teams reside, uh, are garbage, right? Our testing and con contact tracing is like non-existent in this country. Like that's not even a thing. It's a thing really in reality. And a lot of other countries have done it, but we haven't done it for shit. Uh, or at least not very effectively or very well. And testing, I mean, we're still far behind. No matter what anybody says, you know, mainstream media-wise or whatever, it's bullshit. We are definitely not anywhere still where we need to be. I mean, if you think that you're going to test once every three days, you're insane. If you think that that is adequate, you're fucking insane. Anyway, 
One source told ESPN that players on the call were told that they could be fined for conduct detrimental if they are found to have engaged in reckless reckless behavior away from the team facilities such as eating out in restaurants and using ride sharing services. So, but again, as the top infectious disease expert said, you would have to create a bubble. What does that mean? Then that means you would have to like have dormitories where these guys, so that would be on you. You would, they wouldn't even be able to go hang out with friends and family if you were actually implementing the right kind of strict policies that could give you a chance at doing this. But again, the MLS and MLB, uh, NBA bubbles, excuse me, the MLS and NBA bubbles are failing miserably to this point from the reports that I've seen. So, I mean, okay, if you're not actually gonna institute the fucking strict policies right from the get-go and are still gonna let fucking, if you're gonna tell them, okay, you could still go out and you know see family and do other things, blah, 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 but if you just so happen to catch it because you take a ride share or go to a restaurant in Florida where restaurants are still open, uh, last time I saw, like, it's just, it's, it's bullshit. It's total fucking bullshit. The NFL and the owners do not want to have a shred of responsibility. They do not want to face any kind of consequences if anyone from players, coaches, referees, uh, whatever, fans, if anybody catches it and dies in particular or has immense medical bills, which they will, uh, I mean, they just want no responsibility, but they want to make sure that their capitalist, fucking greedy, money-hungry, money-churning machine goes on as planned so that way they don't lose their massive profits. It's just disgusting. They also were updated on the progress league and union medical personnel are making on protective face shields that could be worn while playing, practicing, working out, and moving around team facilities. I, I mean, but these guys... It, oh, that's maddening! They would be sweating! What do you mean? So they're going to... Okay, you have fucking face shields, but these dudes are going to be sweating and throwing sweat and shit. I mean, it's it's just absurd. It's absolutely absurd. <sighs> Digress a little bit here. Anyway, uh, around team facilities, those sources who were on the call said the players are pushing back against those face shields for various reasons, including concerns about how it might affect their vision and their breathing. Uh, I mean, I, I certainly think that's probably less of a concern but okay it's probably on the list the call began sources i, I mean like i said that it anyway that uh the call began sources told espn and if it gets in the air i mean it's it pretty much a wrap at that point in those facilities sources told espn with updates for mayor on the virus in general the players reps were told among other things that testing can decrease transmission but that the virus is very serious and should be taken seriously Testing can decrease transmission. What do they mean by that? Not really. It doesn't do anything to actually stop the transmission. It can help you identify who has it, and then you can do contract trace contact tracing to isolate all those people to then subsequently make sure it doesn't spread. But the testing itself doesn't stop it, and which is absurd. I mean, that's pretty much just a, a you know. A right-wing Republican Trump talking point that if you do more testing like it's just it's it's absolutely fucking of course if you do more testing you're gonna have more cases and blah 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 like yes but if you don't do the testing the cases don't just disappear that's absurd that anyway like none of it has to make any sense apparently but whatever anyway where was I uh, let's see uh, that african-american males are more susceptible to it Yet it is possible to get it a second time, even if you've already had it, and that false negative test results are enough of an issue that players who test positive will be required to test negative twice before they are allowed to return. I mean, yeah, and that's another thing. I mean, there's no definitive uh, science or data to suggest you can't. In fact, the little bit that I've seen would actually suggest you can, because I've seen reports of people getting it a second time. I don't know if those are true or not. Um, but I mean, it's just, it's just a massive disaster that they can't control. Players were told that there has been discussions about wearable contact tracers that would allow teams to identify people with whom an infected player are interacted. And then if they are test positive, their families could be tested as well. Yeah. I mean, then they got to fucking, you know, then they're, of course, they're going to fucking monitor everybody, you know, I mean, it's just going to get into all kinds. There's just going to be issue after issue after issue. There is a larger call scheduled for Friday. That's open to all players not just reps sources told espn there was plenty of pushback on thursday's call from players asking why they're trying to rush back to play if the virus is such a dangerous threat because 
All they care about is their money. Players also have been asking what happens to their contracts if they opt not to play for virus-related reasons, as some NBA, uh, NBA players already have. Not just NBA, but like tennis, uh, I think some soccer players have, NHL players I think have too. What happens if they grow too uncomfortable to play as the season goes on? And what happens to next year's salary cap as a result of lost revenue this year? But the union officials on the call said those issues have yet to be worked out. They're, of course, because... I mean, whatever, dude. There are questions guys want to get answered before we play, one source said. Other details addressed on Thursday's call. Some team meetings could potentially be held in person, but only smaller ones. Most meetings will be conducted virtually. Teams will limit uh, access to the facility to essential employees only. But what does that mean? And facilities will be cleaned and disinfected around the clock. Around the clock. So you, you literally are going to 24-7 going to be cleaning and you think you're going to get every no i mean ridiculous teams will be required to submit emergency response plans regarding the coronavirus so after you know like three days go by because we only test every three days it's spread throughout our entire facility once we have a full-blown outbreak we're gonna have uh you know uh whatever res emergency response okay dude like if you're waiting to that to that moment to react it is just way too fucking late, including procedures that would follow a positive test from someone in the building. Media access is expected to be limited. Media would be required. I mean, they shouldn't be there at all. Media, but of course they're going to have to because they have to have the circus, man. It's got to go. Media would be required to go through the same testing protocol as players and other personnel. And media interviews are likely to be conducted virtually rather than in person. Most of that's fine, except for, you know, the fact that they would allow any in-person at all. Currently, the proposal is to test players and team personnel every other day during training camp. Uh, but player reps on Thursday's call said they would prefer daily testing. Yeah, absolutely. But, I mean, that's the thing, though. And especially if they were going to stagger, you know, groups. If there was going to be a morning practice session with, like, half the team and an afternoon practice session with, like, half the team, you'd have to certainly be testing multiple times a day. I mean, it's just... Availability of and access to testing is an important issue and the league is conscious of the potential backlash it could face if it has greater access to testing than the general public. Players and coaches usually stay in hotels during training camp, but players are being told they will stay in their homes, their own homes, and commute to team facilities this year. I mean, that leaves a lot of open windows, but there is, I mean, there is that other aspect too. I mean, the NFL, which I would consider to be non-essential, it's a luxury. It's, 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 you know, I mean, obviously it's essential for the players, but they should be guaranteed their salaries for the year and the NFL should just bite that fucking bullet. But of course that would be like, you know, minds would be blown, you know, if you said that to NFL executives or, you know, the owners, but they should, that's what they should do. They should shut down the season, guarantee their fucking salaries, and then let's get this thing fucking cleaned up. So maybe next year they can resume. Um, but, you know, if the NFL does have more access to the general pu uh, public who is dying left and right, there, you know, does create that bit of that side of the argument that makes things just that much more dicey. So, so uh, excuse me, you know, it's it's a giant mess and it's it's going to explode. I mean, it already is. They're not going to be able to control it, and it's foolish to think that they can. So anyway, with that, I'm going to get up out of here. I hope you guys appreciate my perspectives. If you do, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you hit the bell if you want to get the alerts. Share my channel and videos with your friends and family. Leave your questions, comments, and concerns down in the comments section. And of course, as always, make sure you follow me on Twitter, at Dylan Tartaro. And with that, I am out. I'll see you all soon. Fins up.